Welcome to part one of the Beyond 20 ServiceNow integration tutorial series, how to set up and use a Salesforce integration spoke in ServiceNow. Both ServiceNow and Salesforce have robust REST APIs to allow other applications integration access. This series will cover how to set up a connection to Sir Salesforce from ServiceNow using the Salesforce integration spoke and OAuth2 authentication. Once we complete our setup, we will demonstrate real-world solutions that can be implemented using this integration. Prior to implementing this integration, you will need to set up the Salesforce spoke in your ServiceNow instance. To do so, log in to your ServiceNow instance with the admin role, and then open another browser window to access the ServiceNow store and log in there as well. If you need help with the installation of a spoke, we have a link to the, in the description to a great ServiceNow video, How to Install Spokes from the ServiceNow Store. Other requirements for this integration include a Salesforce account with either a developer or paid instance of Salesforce, Salesforce admin credentials, a Salesforce connected app, which we will demonstrate in this video how to set up for integration with ServiceNow, and an Integration Hub subscription for your ServiceNow instance. We begin our setup of the integration in the Target Salesforce system. We'll be using a developer's instance of Salesforce Lightning, where we need to first set up a connected app in Salesforce, then set up OAuth2 authentication for the ServiceNow connected app, and then move over to our ServiceNow instance to complete the integration setup. You can obtain a developer's copy of Salesforce by navigating the web to developer.salesforce.com. And then you can sign up for a new account if you don't already have one. Uh, we do not recommend using the trial version. It has some limitations to it. So if you don't have an enterprise or other paid version of Salesforce already intact, go ahead, go to developer.salesforce.com uh, sign up and get yourself a developer's copy that you can use for doing proof of concepts and testing of your integration with your ServiceNow instance. We've already done so, so let's jump right in. Once you've logged into your Salesforce in instance as an administrator, go ahead and go to the Setup menu. And then we want to uh, manage uh, apps, so we'll just go down here to Apps, App Manager, and we want to create a new connected app. Now, what you name your connected app and your API is not a critical naming convention. You can use any naming convention you want. You'll notice that as you type it, once you type in the connected name and hit the tab key, it'll automatically fill in the API name. Email is uh, somewhat important. The rest of the information is totally optional in this section. So you can, you may or may not want to use an, a logo uh, image for this. Certainly, if you do choose to do so, you can also choose one of theirs. And this is kind of handy because they actually have one for ServiceNow. So what we'll do is we'll go down here, grab the ServiceNow logo. And it doesn't actually allow you to just click on it and use it. It just has the actual URL to that. So go ahead and you grab the URL. Go back over here and just paste in the logo, the icon. Info URL, that could just be help at salesforce.com, I believe. In the API, Enable OAuth Settings area of the page, select Enable OAuth Setting. If you're setting up a connected app for an external application on a device with limited input or display capabilities, such as TVs, appliances, or command line applications, you may also select, or you must also select, Enable for Device Flow. For our purposes, we only need the Enable OAuth Settings selected. We also need to set in a callback URL, which will be the instance name with HTTPS in front of it, servicenow.com slash OAuth underscore redirect.do. Next, you'll want to select the available OAuth scopes. These are the scopes that are going to be available to this connection once it's created between ServiceNow and Salesforce using the OAuth credential that is accessed. You'll also want to check the box for uh, require secret for web server flow and require secret for refresh token flow. And that's all the information you need to set up at this time in the connected app for ServiceNow. 
So go ahead and save your changes, and it will take up to 10 minutes for the connected app to render. Now you can complete the setup on the Salesforce side by navigating back to the App Manager. Find the Service Now Connected app you just set up and click the drop down arrow at the far right and select View. This is where we will obtain the consumer key for the client ID and consumer secret for the client secret which ServiceNow will use to connect to the Salesforce API. It's also where you can regenerate these items in the future by clicking on the Generate button. Once you click the button, an email will be sent to an, the account you set up in the Connected app. Open that email and copy the verification code into the form on the Salesforce window to continue. You can now copy the consumer key and consumer secret for use in ServiceNow. And we are ready for the second part of our integration setup, which will take place in our ServiceNow instance. There are two options for authentication of our ServiceNow to Salesforce integration. As we mentioned above, we're going to use the OAuth2 option. We will demonstrate using JSON web tokens in another video. So log into your ServiceNow instance as a user with the admin role and navigate to the connection and credentials and connection and credential aliases and open the Salesforce record. Now, if you're not already working in the Salesforce scope, you'll need to click the link to change scope in order to continue. Okay, click the create new connection and credential. And the connection URL is different than is normal because if you're using the new Lightning Salesforce, it's now uh, your instance is now uh, .lightning.force.com after your instance ID. Go ahead and give your connection a name. We'll just call ours Salesforce Beyond 20 Demo. Then copy the consumer key into the OAuth client ID field from Salesforce and the consumer secret into the OAuth client secret. And your OAuth redirect URL will stay the same. Go ahead and click Create and get OAuth token, and this will give us a pop-up window. And the pop-up window has a lot of information about it. It's asking all of the different things that you want to do. And if you allow it, you will then be able to use this credential going forward. If you deny, you will not be able to use the credential going forward. So we are now ready to demonstrate how to use the Salesforce spoke by testing the flows in Flow Designer. However, before we test our integration, we need to set up some test data. So let's go ahead and click on All. And then in our filter, we're going to put in the SN underscore S force underscore v2 dot spoke underscore case dot list. Now what that is is the uh, link to the table that was generated by the spoke installation uh, for Salesforce and this will allow us to create a new Salesforce case in service now and so you see we've already got two set up here these are two tests that we've already run previously. Let's go ahead and add another one just for this demo video. So click on New. You'll notice you've got a number up here. Uh, you can assign this to just about anybody you want. We'll assign, just pick a... Let's go ahead and pick Charlie. Once you have all of the required fields filled in, you can go ahead and click Submit. And then you will be using this in your uh, flow designer test. So next thing, open up the flow designer. And we'll start off over here in connections. And go ahead and click on view details on the Salesforce connection. And you'll notice that the uh, red area right here will tell you whether or not your OAuth access token is valid or expired. If it's valid, it'll tell you when it's about to expire. And if it's already expired, it'll say that right here. And then there's a link here to get a new OAuth to token. Now this is um, 
something that you can add to your uh, flows if you're using OAuth 2. But uh, for testing, we'll just go ahead and click on this link. This will open up the pop-up from Salesforce. If you've already logged into Salesforce, it will, with the same credential, it will go ahead and give you a token. If not, it would have asked you to log in right here. So we were already logged in. So it gave us our token. And you notice that it's it, it's good. Uh, gives us our expiration date as well and time. All right, the next thing to do is go over here to Flows and search by application for Salesforce Spoke. And go ahead and open up the Salesforce flow. And this flow is very simple. It just says if a record, uh, it's going to create a case. If a record is uh, successfully inserted, it's going to update the uh, sample Salesforce cases record. Uh, otherwise, it's going to log it. So very simple. We're going to go ahead and uh, click on test. It asks us to go ahead and select that Salesforce record that we just created. So we'll go ahead and click on that one. And then we'll run our test. Okay, our test was completed successfully. As you see, it completed the create case. It evaluated it true, so it updated the record. And if we go over into Salesforce, we'll click on our apps and click service. And under recent records, we should see the record that we just created. The test demo video of ServiceNow case in Salesforce. We open that up and we should see all of the information that we put in. I hope this video has been informative for you. Please subscribe to our Beyond 20 LLC channel on YouTube to view more videos on ServiceNow, ITIL, and other ITSM solutions provided by Beyond 20, or visit our website at www.beyond20.com to learn how Beyond 20 can assist your company with ITSM training and consulting, as well as ServiceNow development and administration. Thank <laughs> you.